Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing a very bizarre and extremely bright point of light in the night skies that scientists have been observing for nearly 200 years and that essentially represented something super mysterious. Because in this case the light was coming from somewhere far away, as far as 4 billion light years away from us, and represented a very extreme object. Actually one of the most extreme in the entire universe. This is now known as OJ. 287. And well, here's an interesting tidbit. Astronomers have been actively looking at this object since at least 1880. And this means that we actually have an interrupted record of this object spanning over 150 years. But why? Why so much attention? Well, it's really because of one specific reason. Something happens to this object every 12 years. Just like clockwork, every 12 years, OJ287 flashes with a luminosity that rivals or even exceeds trillion suns. And here's actually one of the more recent such flashes that happened a few years back. And so basically it produces more light than the entire Milky Way galaxy just from that one single point. And this incredible recurring burst has obviously puzzled and fascinated astronomers for a very long time. And that's until we of course realized what this was. Today we know what OJ287 is with almost complete certainty. And that's because these flashes and even the changes in these flashes have been predicted several times using some of the most modern theories including of course Einsteinian principles. And so this is the best known example of what's known as a supermassive black hole binary system. It seems to feature two black holes, actually two monstrous black holes, that are locked in a somewhat bizarre destructive dance. And specifically the orbit potential resembles something like this. It's not exactly circular as you can see, and that's because here there are a lot of different effects from the Einsteinian principles. But in the last few years, and specifically in the last few weeks, there's been quite a lot of new studies and new discoveries about this system, and some which are once again a little bit surprising. And so today we're going to discuss some of the recent updates about this mysterious but also super fascinating object, and of course talk about all of the different studies and all of the different papers you can find in the description. But in essence, OJ287 is what's known as a blazer. And blazers are the most dramatic examples of active galactic nuclei or AGNs that basically represent ultra bright active centers of galaxies with the supermassive black hole in the center actively feeding on a lot of gas and producing a tremendous amount of different emissions. But specifically they also produce jets. Jets that seem to be formed by the magnetic lines from the accretion disk that then funnel some of the charged particles away from the black hole at ridiculously high velocities almost at the speed of light. But it's usually only called a blazer if one of these relativistic jets is pointing almost directly toward the planet. If it's a little bit off it's referred to as a quasar and if it's way off and basically like perpendicular it just resembles a typical AGN and will normally not produce these powerful emissions. And so because the jet is aimed right at us its light is dramatically amplified due to a phenomenon referred to as the relativistic beaming where it essentially appears way way brighter and way more powerful just because all of this light is headed toward us at almost the speed of light. This is an effect of special relativity that causes the emissions to appear much brighter, making this particular object one of the brightest looking objects in the entire universe. And that's despite the distance of basically 4 billion light years. But over decades of observations, scientists revealed a lot of things about this. For example, it seems to have at least several cycles. Apart from the 11 to 12 year cycle, there's also a much shorter cycle combined with a much longer 55 to 60 year cycle which essentially suggests a very complex interplay of something in the center with a lot of orbital interactions. Interactions between one of the black holes and possibly something else. But it was only in 1996 that astronomers finally proposed that this was a binary supermassive black hole because no other explanation actually made a lot of sense. And so in this scenario there are two black holes, with the primary being very large, one of the largest known to us, possibly over 18 billion solar masses in mass, which is like 4000 times more massive than the central black hole in our own galaxy, and even the second black hole is, though smaller, is still much larger than the one in the Milky Way. Here it's about 150 solar masses. Now these values have been argued here and there, with some scientists suggesting that they're possibly way less massive, but they're still very very massive. And they're still most likely much larger than anything in the Milky Way galaxy. And so the smaller black hole seems to move along the elongated elliptical orbit around the more massive partner. 
But the reason we're seeing these emissions and these very bright explosions is really because the larger black hole is also surrounded by the accretion disk. Here basically there's a lot of hot dust, hot gas, lots of different types of plasma that the smaller black hole then collides with. And so roughly around every 12 years, it plunges directly through the disk, crossing it twice in quick successions. And here the supersonic motion hits the disk material so much that it then leads to the creation of huge bubbles of hot gas, with many of these bubbles staying around for months and emitting a lot of energy and radiation for a very long time until they finally cool down. And that's essentially why we see these super bright, super powerful emissions lasting for several weeks. But because of the complexity of the orbit, they're not always exactly 12 years apart. As you can see here, this is actually somewhat difficult to predict unless you know exactly what's happening. But specifically, we need to incorporate the general relativity effects, because here this involves very, very massive black holes. So their orbits are not perfectly circular. And so here there's a bit of a slow decay of the orbit due to various types of gravitational radiation, or basically gravitational waves produced by the black hole. But what's really intriguing is that, as of 2025, a lot of these predictions have been remarkably successful at telling us exactly when these flashes will occur and even what we're going to be seeing. For instance, a predicted increase in brightness that occurred in 2021-2022 was officially confirmed just a few months after, once these emissions actually happened. Which basically means that we seem to understand exactly how the system works and how all of these unusual bursts are formed. But obviously there are still quite a lot of mysteries and quite a lot of unusual observations. And especially when it comes to some of the more extreme effects, such as jets. So first, let's discuss the shape of the jets. In observations spanning from 2014 to 2017, mostly relying on radio telescopes, researchers were able to achieve the most detailed image of this prominent jet blasting from the main black hole. And well, here it is. This is what it kind of looks like. And as you can see, it's not entirely straight. Now, now in terms of distances, this is just one third of a light year, so this is just a very short part, but it does show us a jet that's not straight and seems to be significantly crooked and specifically contains at least three different bands. With some of the most recent images from 2025, along with multiple simulations, confirming a sharply curved ribbon-like structure with this unusual snake in structure, confirming the existence of that second black hole once again. Basically, it seems to actually disrupt the jet as it orbits the larger black hole. You can see some of these effects in this particular simulation by Sean Ressler. And so the gravity of the secondary black hole seems to tug on the primary black hole jet, forcing the jet to wobble and precess, with the jet curvature basically being a very important confirmation of the secondary black hole. But at the same time, there is some extreme stuff going on inside this jet. Here researchers confirmed regions where the temperature seems to reach incredible 10 trillion degrees Celsius or about the same in Kelvin, and that is absolutely mind-blowing. But here it's important to understand that this is possibly not the real temperature, but most likely once again an illusion caused by the relativistic beaming. So this just tells us that the jet motion here is very extreme, and the particles are moving super fast. Either way though, whatever we're seeing here is definitely one of the most extreme objects known to us. Then we have some really intriguing discoveries about that secondary black hole. Now until recently the existence of the black hole was only inferred from various gravitational effects, and trying to see that secondary black hole was very difficult because it seems to be very close to the center. But some of the emissions from a few years back did actually reveal a few surprises. In one of these very large flares that produced 100 times more light than the entire galaxy, researchers found signs that this seems to be coming from a powerful burst empowered by that secondary black hole rapidly swallowing a massive dose of gas pulled from the accretion disk of the larger black hole. And because here it only lasted for one day, it must have been the smaller black hole and not the larger one, mostly because the effects around the larger black hole usually last much longer. And at the same time, NASA Fermi telescope was able to observe this as well and detected the biggest gamma ray flare coming from this region. And this suggested that the secondary jet from that secondary black hole was possibly interacting with all of the gas around it, producing some of these very powerful gamma rays. But I guess some of the most important studies and some of the most important discoveries were all made in late 2025. We now have very specific and extremely precise simulations showing us exactly what's happening in the system and showing us how everything seems to work. And these beautiful simulations are right now extremely accurate. Basically here it combines physics of gravity, fluid dynamics and electromagnetism to rigorously test the binary model. 
and so far every single prediction from this model seems to match what we observe in real life. Basically confirming that core idea. The idea being that there is a collision of a small black hole in the accretion disk that happens twice, with the disk then generating enough power to account for every single bright flash. But because these simulations go a little bit further, here they also make some really intriguing predictions. In this case, it shows that the repeated impacts seem to dramatically modify the accretion disk with the gravity of the orbiting black hole, making the disk tilt and also warp in it quite a lot. And so in this simulated system, the tilt can be quite dramatic, anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees, with these collisions also generating a lot of internal spiral shocks, which as they fall inward, temporarily boost the rate at which the black hole feeds thus increasing the emissions once again. And so right now these very detailed models provide us with a crucial fact-based visualization and basically explain pretty much everything in the system after 150 years. But I guess the question here is, okay, so why exactly does this matter and why is it so important to modern astrophysics? Well, really because right now this represents the best possible example and the best possible laboratory we have for studying these supermassive black holes. And specifically binary black holes that we actually don't really see that much. And so here, because of all of these very precise emissions, we can now study everything from the accretion disk to the jet and can obviously use this to confirm various ideas and various propositions, including various Einsteinian principles or anything else in regards to additional theories such as quantum gravity. Moreover, this is a great test for additional technologies, such as trying to observe black holes super far away. And the fact that scientists were able to see a tiny part of the jet super close to the black hole is already pretty impressive. At the same time, this is also an important exploration that helps us understand how black holes grow and what happens when large galaxies collide. Since we think galaxies grow through mergers, this also means that central black holes have to either collide or possibly replace one another with one of the black holes getting kicked out. And so in this case, OJ287 gives us a direct observation of what seems to happen at these final stages. This actually relates to a really important problem, known as the final parsec problem, that still doesn't have a very good answer. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. And so here, based on all of the calculations, we're pretty certain that these black holes are also going to merge, but probably in about 10,000 years. But as they move closer and closer together, they're also going to be producing even more emissions and even more gravitational waves, suggesting that the emissions from this object are going to become more and more extreme. Now, right now, we don't have the technology to detect these gravitational waves yet, but by using what's known as the pulsar timing array that has been used in the Milky Way galaxy recently, once again, the video in the description talks about this a little bit more, scientists might be able to spot some of these passing gravitational waves as they produce massive tsunamis in nanohertz frequency range. And so by accurately tracking and predicting a lot of these flares, astronomers gain crucial data needed to improve our models of gravity and basically help us understand what happens in these absolutely ridiculous extreme environments. And so here, OJ287 is not just some kind of a distant bright point of light. This is a very important physical confirmation for a lot of different astrophysical theories we have today. As a matter of fact, so far it's been able to confirm most of the cosmological principles. And so if we do actually see something somewhat bizarre in this system and cannot explain it, it's only in that case that we might have to start reworking some of the theories. For now though, all of the observations seem to match the theoretical predictions almost perfectly. But obviously because this is science, the research is still going to continue because scientists do want to find something even more bizarre or possibly something that will be kind of difficult to explain. And so here they really want to push the boundaries, observing something that's super far away. But this is definitely one of the most important objects and one of the most important black holes known to us. Although there are some other blazers and quasars that you see right here that are also pretty important and we'll discuss some of them in some of the videos in the description. Anyway, we'll definitely come back and discuss this more once there are some updates. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. Additionally, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.